Hi guys, my name is Christine and I'm a dating, relationship and personal development coach. And today I'm talking about simple dating ideas. So some dates, you know, some good ideas that you can do when you're going on those first few initial dates before you enter that relationship. So these are dates that you can do, like it could be like the first date, it could be um, any kind of dates in between from going from just dating each other to being exclusive and being in that relationship, which generally um, with the typical couple takes about two months, about two months of dating before they enter something more serious and they start, um, you know, being together um, in a more relationship style way. Um, so obviously these are tips for more people that are here in the West, because I know some people have like things like arranged marriages and can't do this sort of thing. But um, if you're here in the West, like me, um, and you live in the United States or the UK or somewhere else, um, then this is probably typically what's going to go for you. And you know, it's good that we have this sort of system. And I think it is a good system, um, you know, where we date, get to know each other, kind of try before you buy, you know, which you kind of have to do because you don't know who you're going to end up with if you, you know, perhaps, you know, have some sort of like arranged thing. Um, but also they're, they're obviously like uh, good sides to things like arranged marriages. Um because you know it kind of takes away too many options um and uh usually i think you know the parents who do these sort of things or whoever's arranging these things do generally most of the time have the best interests at heart for their kids who they're trying to set up and things like that so you know there's good and you know there's there's good and there, there's pros and cons to basically both of these sort of you know you know arranged marriages or you know when you were living here in the west and you can go on dates and meet people that way and try before you buy i obviously prefer the try before you buy sort of thing because um you just get to know someone on a much deeper level before you actually reach that relationship status and i think sometimes that can be important because you want to make sure that you're attracted to them physically and you also want to make sure that you have the same values and you want the same things in life as well. So let's talk about then these simple dating ideas. So for a first date, what you want to be doing is you want to be doing something just like a, a drink, right? Because if you commit to like going out to dinner with someone on a first date, you know, dinners, you know, tend to take a, a long time. Whereas with just having a drink, it doesn't take you know, you could sit there for like 30 minutes, you know, it doesn't have to be a long thing. You could even sit there for 15 minutes if you feel like, oh no, this person isn't what I want at all. Um, maybe it's the case that they've completely misrepresented themselves on uh, on the dating app or something and um, they actually look nothing like their profile. You know, you can just leave, right? Which is um, a good thing. Now, you know, so I've seen, it's kind of weird because I've seen like a few of these um, like social experiments where, um, someone you know looks really hot in their photos and they kind of trick the you know the people going to go out with them and they kind of go in like a fat suit right and shame the other person um or I think I think it was a fat suit or something but they they basically it was a, obviously it was an experiment but you know when someone misrepresents themselves you know because because basically it was put across like oh my god so many people are so um what's the word um shallow right that people are shallow like oh my god they this person looked great on but would it look great on tinder but when they met them in person and they looked bigger and they looked much fatter or whatever it was it's like oh my god they that that they're so you know and the, and the person reacted badly to seeing someone like that and they walked away basically you know they're like oh my god that person's such a bad person they're so shallow for not continuing that date with that person but the thing is though if that they they lied they lied you know, I know it was a social experiment, but like if someone's, you know, perceiving themselves to be skinny or whatever it may be, it doesn't have to be skinny. It could be like, it could be their job profession. They could say they're like a lawyer, but really they're working somewhere else and it's not, you know, as good as being a lawyer or something, you know, they're like working at somewhere where they're only getting like a, they're getting minimum wage. That's lying, right? And it's the same with photos. If you misrepresent yourself in a photo when you're a lot more fatter or just look a lot different than what you do in your profile photo, then that's lying. That's, that, you know, I, I think people walking away from those kinds of situations when someone shows up to a date who's completely misrepresented themselves online, 
I think more power to you because that person lied and you don't want to be with a liar. You know, what else are they lying about if they're lying about how they look in photos and they're lying about, um, you know, other thing, you know, it could be something in their profile, right? You don't know. You're like, it's, it's, you know, I don't personally want to be with anyone who's dishonest in that way, right? And I don't think neither should you. So if you go out on a date with someone and they have completely misrepresented themselves in some sort of way, like the way that they look, or it could be, um, it, it could be something to do with their profession, or it could be something that they've wrote in their bio about themselves that you thought was really cool, and then you go out with them and they and you realise that they don't actually like that stuff because they've lied about it. I, you know, walk away from those situations. You don't want to be with someone who is dishonest, and that's something kind of, that kind of irked me a few years ago when I saw like these um, sort of like social experiments where you know, people would go out on a date and they thought that the person they were going on a date with looked like looked a certain way, but they actually was like um, obese and they've put like on a fat suit and things like that to make themselves look more fat and to shame the people who were basically going out on dates with this, this person, right? It was just really uncool and I don't think, you know, because, you know, you can see how like you would like jump to the conclusion like, oh my God, they should have just sat around that, but they've probably got a really nice personality, you know, um, you know, you can see how you can kind of jump to that conclusion in your mind if you watch one of those sort of things. But what you got to remember is that person in the fat suit was, you know, putting it across that they were lying about who they are, right? And that's not cool. That's not nice. And you don't want to be with someone who is dishonest in that way. And I think more power to those people that did actually walk away and, uh, you know, didn't want to continue dating that person. So anyway, meeting up for just a drink is a good thing because if someone does come, you know, you come into contact with someone who's misre- misrepresented themselves or perhaps you don't like the, the, the way that they speak very much, um, perhaps they're really negative or something like that and, you know, you're just having a chat and you can kind of tell these cues that, mm, you know what, I'm not really that attracted to you, then you can just leave. So while that's why a drink is the best thing you can do for a first date, it doesn't have to be of the alcoholic kind. It could just be having a coffee or a tea, obviously preferably in the evening because it's more romantic, but you know, if you just have a drink with them, it's so much more easier to leave. And also, if it's just a drink and you really like them, it's easier to extend the date because then you can go somewhere for a meal or you can go and have some appetizers somewhere or you can go and get some ice cream. You can extend the date. You can make it longer if you like them. So that's why just a drink for the first date is really cool. In fact, you may want to start off that way for the first couple of dates as well, just in case, because you might have a really good time on the first date and then you meet up with them on the second date and their whole demeanor and their whole mood is just completely switched and changed and perhaps they were just being, they were just on their best behavior basically on the first date. So you may want to continue that pattern for a while while you are, you know, like hanging out with them and getting to know them. So another thing that you kind of, um, want to, but something that you want to avoid basically is going to anywhere that's a really loud venue. So this is like a gig or a nightclub or somewhere where it's really, really loud, like a cinema where you can't actually have a conversation and chat together, right? You want to go somewhere that's kind of quiet, um, that sort of, um, kind of a little bit intimate, I guess you could say. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be intimate, but you know, you want to go somewhere where there's not much loud noise. So, you know, a bar might be okay if they don't have, if their music isn't too loud, um, like if it's a sports bar or something, um, you know, where they're playing like um, the sports on the screen or something like that. Um, you you kind of want to avoid those kinds of places, especially if you're into sports, because you don't want to be, you know, looking at the TV when you're supposed to be paying attention to your date and finding out who this person is and getting to know this person. So you don't want to go anywhere that's, where it's rowdy, where it's too loud. Go somewhere quiet, inexpensive um, for a drink. That's the best sort of first date you can have. Like I said, you can then extend it. So another thing that you can do that is uh, quite, you know, inexpensive and stuff, um, because you don't want to be spending too much money on first dates, especially if you go on first dates quite a lot and you're, you know, really serious and trying to find someone. You know, you know, it racks up. The money racks up. So you do some more inexpensive things. So another inexpensive thing, like after you've been for just a drink, you could go for a walk somewhere. You might walk around the city that you are in or the town or perhaps there's like a nice park nearby that you can walk around and have a chat you know that's something you know quite inexpensive where you can just talk and get to know each other right 
Another thing is like window shopping. That's quite fun. You know, you go into, you know, you look in, you know, the windows of shops and kind of point out things. You might make some funny comments about certain things that you see in there. Like if you see like a mannequin that it's wearing kind of like a weird goofy outfit, you can, you know, talk about that. Or you can go into the shops as well and just sort of look around um, and, you know, look at the different things. Because you can interact with each other fun in, in a fun way that way if you're like kind of like picking off things off the shelves. And like going into like a candle shop is quite nice. Or like a soap shop where you can like pick up the soap and you can both like sniff it and you know it's, it's, it's really sweet and intimate and you can get really close to each other and things like that so definitely go somewhere like where you can find like candles or some some like incense where you can go and smell things together where you can just be close and um you know you can pick things up and you smell it and then you let her smell it you know things like that it's really nice um and you know it's the same it doesn't have to be that kind of thing it can be just you know you go into like some like quirky different shops if you live somewhere that's like a tourist destination there's probably loads of little trinkets that you guys can look at and things like that and take the take the mick out of a few things uh you know have a laugh have a joke but as you can see you don't have to buy anything it's inexpensive you're just going into shops you're doing window shopping and things like that and i think that kind of activity is fun you know you can you, what you want to do is you want to get really good at being in situations where you can kind of make anything fun so if you're at a park for example you could like people watch and kind of give people off in the distance their own voices. You know, you can give like the dog walkers their own vo- voice and you can kind of, you know, like, um, you know, just kind of, it's kind of a bit judgmental, but it's kind of funny if obviously you're not doing it so loudly that they can hear you. Um, but just doing something like that can be quite fun as well. It's just getting used to being, you know, quite charming and fun in that kind of way. And, um, you know, just essentially, you know, being able to be in any kind of situation and making it fun, whether it's a situation where you're spending money or it's a situation where you're not spending money, like if you're on a walk or if you're just, you know, window shopping, you know, it's, it's, it's you know, when you're sitting down in a restaurant, you might do a bit of people watching or something like that and, again, give people voices and, and things, you know, it's quite charming and quite fun and you can make the person that you're with have a laugh, have a giggle and, yeah, that's basically what you want anyway, you want to have fun, you want to have a laugh on a date, you want to have a good time and you don't have to have you don't have to spend loads of money basically to have a good time now of course if you want to spend money and you want to have a big fancy dinner and things like that then sure go ahead but make sure that you just have a drink first because you don't want to be spending like three hours doing like a free course meal with someone you're not really that into okay so go for that drink first um you know another place that you can do is like a cafe because obviously like those those are like more um quiet as well they tend to be more quiet um, and you know, perhaps you want to go somewhere. Obviously, it's probably better to go in the evening because it's more romantic. Um, but going for going for that is is quite good, especially if you're not a drinker and you don't want to go to like a restaurant and get like a, I don't know, meet up at a, a bar or restaurant that's quiet and have like a, a a mocktail or something or a or a cocktail, you know, or a drink, whatever it may be. You don't have to do that. You could go to like a cafe. But I feel like most bars anyway and most pubs have uh like they have coffee options or tea options or you know they've always got soft drinks as well so you don't have to be a drinker because in case someone's watching this that's underage you don't have to do that kind of thing you know it's better to go you know you could go to a cafe but you could go to it kind of like later in the evening to just to make it a bit more romantic you know when kind of like when the sun's setting it makes it kind of nice um and yeah that's my basically my ideas on you know some simple dating ideas that you can do in those first few dates um, in those, you know, couple of months where you're getting to know someone and you haven't got into anything serious with them yet. Um, so you can get to know them to the max, basically. And obviously, you know, as you, you know, after the first few dates, let's say after the first, like, three or four dates, maybe you can go to somewhere a bit louder. Maybe you can have a cinema date. Um, but make it into a big thing. Don't just go to the cinema where you just pick her up or pick him up and then you go and then you come back, Right. Go and have a meal or go and have a drink afterwards so you can have a chat about the movie or just have a chat in general. Or it might be something that you want to do before the movie, you know, things like that. So there's just something for you to consider. Um, and, uh, you know, you just get into that, just get yourself to that point where you can be in any kind of situation with someone that you're on a date with and make it fun. It doesn't matter if you're doing something exciting. It doesn't matter if you're doing something boring. It doesn't matter if you're doing something inexpensive. And it doesn't matter if you're doing something expensive. All that matters is you're having a good time, you know how to make that person laugh, you're having, you know, you're just, you know, just having a good, fun, enjoyable experience. So thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to get in touch with me personally and you like coaching with me, then please go to www.christineloveridge.com and I shall talk to you again very soon. Goodbye guys.